And for more about the State of the Union, from his perspective, Raphael Bernal, he's a staff writer at The Hill. Thank you for taking time to join us. Um, you heard Nathan there talk a little bit about some of the key points that President Biden is likely to address. And I guess there's two thoughts to this, right? Either you, you stick with it being a very positive approach, or you address your critics on some of the negative things that he's had to deal with at least uh, in, the ne in the last three to six months. And specifically, I'll start with the economy. What's he going to say about that? Well, as, as you said, and as Nathan said, what the Biden administration really wanted was for this State of the Union to be a victory lap. They wanted to come in, talk about that jobs report, talk about the possibility, even likelihood, that a recession will be avoided. But that is still, that is still very much in the air, and, and, the, and that focus on the economy has been distracted by the possibility that, that Congress might not agree on a debt ceiling before you know, before it comes due, and also nobody knows when that will happen exactly, which makes it a little bit scarier and has markets a little bit more jittery. And of course, the uh, the incident with the, um, as, as Nathan put it, the uh, errant the Chinese balloon uh, also distracted attention from economic successes into foreign policy. Yeah, let, let, let me dive a little deeper into the domestic issues here. One of the things that he's been faced with over the past six to nine months, and this partially relates to the conflict in Ukraine, is that we saw inflation numbers peak up, the price of oil came up. We often talk about the, uh, the cost of living in different countries. And of course, it's also here in America that we are also dealing with ways to mitigate the higher costs of inflation, which almost hit 10 percent, essentially. Now, at the same time, President Biden is going to highlight how strong the job market is as well. From his point, these accomplishments, is it enough to silence his critics to say that he has not done enough for the American people? In the current political climate, nothing is enough to, to silence his critics. Joe Biden has been a president who, ne who never really had a, the benefit of the doubt, never, never had a honeymoon period. And if he did, that ended with the Afghanistan pullout. And that might as well be in the Stone Age for, for how quickly American politics is moving. So it wouldn't silence his critics, but he, it would make his life a little bit easier. It, it would give less, uh, less ammunition to his critics. And Joe Biden, regarding his critics, he wants to be the good cop and let the let congressional Democrats be the bad cop. He ha he wants to put out a, a, a helping hand to Republicans to to work together on the debt ceiling, although probably not negotiate on the debt ceiling. Those are two very different things. While congressional Democrats right. levy criticisms against Republicans. And, and and then you have obviously the issue of this is a partial Republican Congress, so he has to find a way to work together. And when we move on to say the foreign policy issues. We're not in agreement in Congress on what to do about Ukraine. We're, we're, we seemingly, I, I think, the criticism of going back to the balloon, but it goes further back than that, right? It's about U.S. policy, specifically dealing with Asia, specifically with, with China. We don't have a uniform voice when it comes to how to handle these situations, and he has to speak to those critics too, doesn't he? He does. Biden's critics will see him as, as weak on China. They, they'll see him. Uh, they've seen him as weak as, like I said, since since the Afghanistan pullout. I think he still does have a majority in Congress, in both houses of Congress, including the Republican-led House, on the Ukraine issue. But it's not as strong a majority as it was when there was a Democratic leadership. And and the fact that that he was unable to engage with China because of the balloon incident and because of uh, Secretary Blinken's postponed trip to China, that has has opened up more fodder to critics who who say that Biden, despite having a very long history of foreign policy experience, uh, might not have as many foreign policy successes as he wishes he could present today. Typically as I have been watched dozens of these speeches, midterm speeches highlight what we did good or what you did good, but the job's not done yet. There's still more work to do. I mean, that's typically how these speeches go. When we say there's more work to do, he still has two more years, but the billion dollar question is, will he talk or mention 2024? It's it's it is the billion dollar question, frankly, and and he knows already that the Republican rebuttal uh, delivered by 40 year old uh, uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, uh, the um, the governor of Arkansas, she is expected 
to say that she's half the age of the president. The, the uh, questions about Joe Biden's age, uh, whether fair or not, I mean, numerically, I guess he, he is the oldest president in, in history, but whether, whether fair or not, they will continue. He knows it, he has to know it, and, and, he, and he has very few options but to lean into it, knowing that everything from his gait to the way he expresses himself will be more severely judged than it has been with previous presidents. Rafael Bernal from uh, Staff Writer at The Hill. Really appreciate your analysis on it. A couple more hours to go. I'm sure you'll be watching as closely as we will. Thank you.